Hello, Facebook people. Um, this news, breaking news update is all about Twitter's new rules. Um, I posted this, if you're a member of my free online classroom, The Front Row. If you're not, go to frontrowclassroom.com and join. Um, and if you're a vip -er, then this is already old no news to you. But uh, this is really important. I did a live stream earlier inside my group, but I just thought uh, I need to do this uh, really publicly because um, everybody needs to know if you care about Twitter. If you don't, bye-bye. Um, essentially, if you're using a scheduler like Meet Edgar or Recur Post or Social Umph or Post Planner or really any of those services that allows you to put your content into the scheduler and then have it recirculate on an evergreen cycle, um, you're going to have to stop. Because, and the other thing is, if you're doing anything with IFTTT, if this, then that, that gets people to um, where you send an automatic DM, which I've always, always hated, um, or you're adding people to a list, which I've always loved. So if somebody tweets with the hashtag social media or SMMW18, like the recent social media marketing world content con conference, then they would automatically get added to a Twitter list, which was super handy because then you could just click into the list and see what people were talking about. You can't do that either anymore. Um, so what I've done today is I have gone into Meet Edgar, my boyfriend. I love Meet Edgar. And I have paused my queue until I figure out what what we're going to do at Jen Laner Media. And... IFTTT, that's, that's something that I would do, that recipe to add people to a list just from time to time. Uh, so I don't think, that, and I don't think that's any big whoop. But I do know people who will use IFTTT to auto retweet uh, people, to automatically welcome them or greet them or say thanks for the retweet or whatever. I always thought that automated engagement was garbage. Uh, so for me, hi, Sylvia, for me, that's, I was never doing that anyway. If you're doing that, you should have never been doing that anyway. So stop doing that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else um, that comes to mind. If you hijack a hashtag, this was also never a good idea, but I saw it a lot with Social Media Marketing World, and I know it happens a lot with some of the more popular hashtags where you will send out a whole bunch of tweets based on that hashtag and it has nothing to do with your product or service, you will also get busted. So someone in uh, Front Row VIP um, pointed out, she took a screenshot of where it says this person's account has been suspended. Um, and she said she's seen an awful lot of those over the last few days. So uh, I'm guessing that it has something to do with these new with these new rules. So if you're using Meet Edgar, um, slow your roll, pause it all together. And I say Meet Edgar as generally speaking across all, um, all of the schedulers. The other thing is if you currently subscribe to an RSS feed, like I know that I do that. So I subscribe to social media marketing, no, social media examiners RSS feed because literally every single article that they publish is exactly it, well, first of all, it's fantastic. Like they, they have, they just have the best articles. Um, and they're a hundred percent relevant to my audience. So I don't even have to, I don't even have to screen the article because I know it's going to be great. So the way that it's set up is that I subscribe to their, uh, their blog feed, their, their publishing feed, and it automatically, based on the schedule that I've set, publishes to Twitter several times a day through Edgar. But there's no commentary when you do that, right? There's no comment that says this article is important because or, oh, wow, this is a great article or, oh, can't wait to see what happens with this new Snapchat feature. If you don't do that, they're also that's also going to look spammy. So is this horrible? Um, no, it's not. Is it inconvenient? Very, very inconvenient. <laughs> um, but in the end... It's, you know, I was saying when I did this stream, did, did this live stream earlier, I was saying that, um, 
to be honest, I haven't been really happy with my Twitter feed as of late because when Twitter introduced the feature that allows you to see what you missed with the people who you follow, then instead of those tweets just going off into thin air as they used to do, they kind of like get clogged up. And so when people, hey, what what was Jen up to today? They're going to see a lot of the same tweets, even though I have hundreds of different tweets, they're going to still, they're going to start to notice that I am just tweeting out the same thing. And I never really, I didn't feel great about that, right? So sometimes, what is it? Necessity is the mother of all invention. Well, we're basically being put, like you either you're going to comply or um, Twitter is going to punish you. And so I've been growing my Twitter account for several years now. And I've worked hard to have uh, a good following and, um, and I, you know, as automated as my content is, my engagement is always 100% human, right? So someone will comment on the article that was sent out, then I would jump in and reply, thank you, or always thanking people for the retweet personally, not automated. Um, so I feel like, you know, I have, uh, I have used best practices with Twitter, but now the rules have changed. So the way that I'm using Twitter is now uh, not in compliance. So I turned off my Edgar and you won't be seeing any tweets from me for a few days until uh, my team and I figured this out. Uh, one thing that Meet Edgar pointed out when they sent out this notice to their subscribers is, and of course they're going to try to put a spot, positive spin on it. Um, but again, it, it really, it really will in the end be positive. But they said, there's nothing stopping you from using the same link. Okay. So what that means is if you have a piece of content that you love to send out, um, around the clock, it's like the best blog post you ever wrote and it's evergreen. So it's always going to be relevant to your audience. Um, and you want to make sure that all your new followers see it and the people who haven't seen it see it. Uh, you can use that link. You can keep using that link, but the, if you're going to use an image, that image needs to look completely different, and your tweet itself, like the wording of your tweet, needs to be crafted differently. Uh, so one thing to consider, and I'll, if you're in VIP, I will be laying out my whole strategy and plan after it's developed, but it will probably look something like, um, let's say, uh, for for all of those best lead magnets that are my best um, my best tweets that grow my audience the fastest, like freebies and that sort of thing, or podcast episodes that I really especially love, what I'll do is we might create 60, um, I'm going to say if I'm going to tweet a blog post twice a day, morning and night, let's say, then we would create at the beginning of the month 60 different images for that tweet and 60 different sent it 60 different written blurbs for that tweet. It sounds horrible, but it's like anything when you create an assembly line or a, or a, you know, on your Trello board or your Google sheets, however you like to organize your content, it's actually perfectly doable and you could do it in short order. So like I'm thinking for the graphics, you know, when you go into Canva, you can just hit duplicate, 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 like just as fast as you can click the button, you're duplicating that image. Then you go in and you can quickly change the color of each background, replace each little overlay picture, and bam, you have 60 different images, okay? So, um, and then uh, Canva also allows you to download and everything is organized beautifully into its own little folder, okay? So, so you, now you've got all the images for that tweet and then you maybe a spreadsheet, again, I'm not certain how I'm going to do this, but a spreadsheet that would have 60 different blurbs. Um, of the call to action or whatever it is you want to say about that thing and then and then put it in to Edgar and to go out uh, twice a day for a month that's how I came up with 60 because I'm good at math <laughs> um, okay so see that's just one that's just one one way we might do it um, or it might be time where you say you know what I'm done with Twitter I hope not. Or you might say, um, I'm just not going to automate anything anymore. I'm just going to tweet something when I think it's important, when I see something I want to retweet, and I'm just going to give myself a break, and I'm going to I'm going to do that as well. And I think that's fine. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that I would not disregard this 
um, this announcement from Twitter uh, at all. Um, do so at your own peril if you plan on using continuing to use Twitter. The other thing that they said that, that they announced is that they are no longer – oh, two more things. They are no longer going to allow us to – um, share like so if you have a Twitter account and you have and um, let me back up this is from Edgar Edgar said that they're gonna dis they because of Twitter's new rules um, you can't share to multiple Twitter accounts from one meet Edgar account so if you have an agency and you've been doing that um, look at that because you might not want to do that anymore and finally um, you know in my bur- in my Twitter course called Birdners, we use a tool called Manage Flitter to grow a targeted following. It's a fantastic tool because it really does allow you to follow people um, who are likely to follow you back. You can look at the ratios of how they follow. You know what I mean? So it wouldn't follow Beyonce even if Beyonce was my target audience because Beyonce doesn't follow anybody back. So manage flitter would always save you the trouble but if i so if i wanted to follow people who identified themselves as uh, authors fiction authors a novelist a plumber a candlestick maker whatever manage flitter allowed me to go out and find those people follow the ones who would likely follow me back and it was a beautiful thing because it, it wasn't like hey how are you how are you doing kirsten great to see you um so it wasn't like just a mass follow and follow like with Crowdfire, I think is like that. So those days are gone too. I don't care. There are a lot of big names in Twitter who are big ambassadors for a brand like Manage Flitter. So they're names that you trust. But I just want to tell you that I have gone through these terms and conditions today with a fine tooth comb. And I can say with confidence that – we should not be using Manage Flitter. I, I kind of touched on this. I, I went back and forth about it um, a while back and and sort of declared, okay, I don't think we should use it. But then I saw some people who uh, have, you know, who are very trusted Twitter experts who were still using it, and Manage Flitter themselves reassured me that it was everything was kosher. Um, but when I look at the terms and conditions, I really just don't see how it could be unless you just make it follow five people a day and you don't unfollow any people because the terms and conditions say that if you aggressively follow and unfollow and they see a pattern of this and it's done like remotely via a bot, then that's against the rules. And that's exactly, you could tiptoe around it and try to, um, and pretend that you're using it in another way, but that's the way Manage Flitter is effective. You say, follow, you, you set the limits, you set the daily limits. But let me just say, like, it wouldn't be worth the cost of the software if you were following five people a day and unfollowing one person a day. You know what I mean? Like, it just wouldn't even make sense. You might as well not even use that service. That service works because you're saying, follow 100 people a day. Um, and, and then you, and then, let's say 70% of those people follow you back. So your, your following grows uh, really quickly and it's, and it's a relevant following. But again, things change and we are, we're open-minded and flexible and, uh, and open to change around here. So I hope, I hope you are as well, because um, honestly, whenever I see platforms make changes like this, even the Facebook algorithm, I just think, in the end, like it's all about the end user, and we're also users, so we're we're we are broadcasters and publishers, but we're users of this content, right? And so, um, so on Facebook, when it comes to the algorithm, yeah, I mean, don't we do want to see more meaningful content? We don't want to see ads for coaches every two seconds, you know, and so. While, again, it's an inconvenience and it's going to be a little hiccup um, in our content creation plan and in our marketing schedules, um, in the end, I hope you will embrace this the way that I am as uh, as ultimately a good thing for, for each of us. That's my take on it. So I hope you have a great day. If you think someone needs to know about this, please tag them underneath uh, or share it on your own page 
or whatever, but we don't want our buddies uh, to get um, – we don't want them to get shut down over on Twitter. So if you, if you see it happening, you might want to say, hey, I just learned about the new terms and conditions, and you need to turn off your automator until you can figure it out. Okay? So that's it, and I'll see you later.